Mr. Calendar, can we not be at like February already? <laughs> Thanks. Welcome to the January Q&A, where I'll be taking questions you guys asked in this last month, and I'll throw the answers back at ya. I do one of these Q&As every month, so if you'd like to leave a comment for next month, feel free to do so below. Let's get started with a good one. Joao says, Q&A question. Why is the Rapid Blaster not actually rapid, but has wide range, and the Clash Blaster is rapid? Wasn't it supposed to be the opposite? Uh... Uh, the answer to that one, my friend, is that, uh, Ammo Knights doesn't give refunds, and you should definitely take a look at what the weapon descriptions say before you buy them. Okay, bye! <laughs> to be actually honest with you, I have no idea. I think that the Rapid Blaster is quicker than regular blasters, but the Clash Blaster, as the name implies, just, just clashes with all the rules! It's not meant to make sense. Sam Burrier asks a question. Can you say Splatoon 1 Special five times fast? Okay, alright. Um, Splatoon 1 Special. That's not fast enough. Splatoon 1 Special, Splatoon 1 Special, Splatoon 1 Special, Splatoon 1 Special, Splatoon 1 Special. Let's try it. Let's try faster. Splatoon 1 Special, Splatoon 1. Oh, <laughs> okay, there's our limit. Oh, speaking of other cat videos, Jordan says, Q&A! If one of your pets were to rise up against you, which one would it be? Look at that face. Look at that face. Only, only pure evil in that face. <laughs> Hi. Who's, who's, who's evil? Are, are you evil? Look at those evil eyes. Look, give us, give us one more evil stare. Come on. Come on. Uh, I guess maybe, maybe he's not evil. Oh, bye. Aviana asks, how long have you been a rat in Splatoon 2? Well, originally, as I've told people before, I actually didn't like the sploosh at all. <laughs> I thought it was just, you know, garbage. And I made a video where I, like, I just did bunches of things, and I had a garbage can, and a sploosh in the garbage can, and I was like, this is a trash weapon! And then I kind of changed, because I kept, like, pushing this, like, mentality that I was like, oh, I don't really like the sploosh, it's kind of like, you know, a funny joke. And then I kind of, like, tried the strategy that I said would never work in a game of Rain Maker Walleye one time on a Sunday fun day, and I actually made a video out of it, so... It would be this one right here that I hopefully put in the video, and it came out on this day. And this is officially when the rat shenanigans started. About this point is when I actually changed my name on my Discord to be the rat. Uh, it just... <laughs> it all just kind of happened all at once. No regrets. Squaggy says, question, what is one Splatoon 1 specific thing that you wish was in Splatoon 2? I kind of wish the Rainmaker still did that thing where it just like kind of like explodes out from the Rainmaker in that big tornado instead of being the bomb that kind of like drops down on people. The reason being like it painted the Rainmaker path like so well where now you kind of have to rely on your teammates a bit more to make sure that you have the ground coverage to move forward. I think it was always fun, too, to just blast the Rainmaker and just see, like, three people die instantly on, like, uh, I hate to say it, but on Rainmaker Triggerfish. Because you would just shoot it forward, people would be running at you across the bridge, and then, nope, nobody there anymore. <laughs> Aaron says, does Vic still try avoiding Fire Emblem if I ask about it? Flowey says, question, what is the best sounding musical instrument according to you? Ooh. Ooh. I would say, like... An acoustic guitar. I love listening to like acoustic music on like my drive to work and on my drive home from work and just basically anywhere that I'm driving. I love, uh, there's one XM channel called The Coffee House. It's like 14, I think. And like sometimes they play only acoustic music for like a really long time. And it's, it's the best channel. It's the only one that's like, that's always like there for me. Cause it's just, it's nice. You get all the nice little acoustic guitars. You get like maybe on occasion a violin. Oh. And you just get like, like all the vocals, just all there at once. It's good. I would really like to learn to play guitar someday. It's something that I never learned to do. And we have a guitar in the house. And there are so many like ways to learn it online. Ah, I think that's something that I'd like to do this year. I didn't like make any resolutions, but I don't think it's too late to like start learning something, right? Okay, now these two questions, I don't actually have an answer for them. Although I think the original Shrek is my favorite Shrek. But I, I just couldn't pass up on this because... <laughs> They're just, they're, they're back to back. What are, they, what are they, what are they doing? How did this even happen? They're not even like, they're not even like chronologically back to back. But on YouTube, they showed up back to back. And I was like, that's not, that's not correct. <laughs> uh, the thing about uh, Shrek though, 
is that it also uses Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, which is my favorite song. So sometimes when I tell people that I really like like the Hallelujah, like the ba da da, I have to be like, oh, you you've probably heard it in Shrek. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> Booyaback asks, what kind of aesthetic are you most interested in or associated with? And honestly, even though nothing that I really have on my channel has a pastel aesthetic at all, I really like looking at stuff that has like a nice like pastel aesthetic. And then ironically, on the other side of things, I, I just really like anything that's like oversaturated, just like obnoxious. Like, uh, I've seen some art online that usually I'll retweet it, but just like has like so much pop of color to it. Cause like, it's just like a, it's like an attack on the eyes almost. But it's still like just fun to look at. Ooh, Ben Smothers asks, what do you prefer? Warm brownies with ice cream or warm pie with ice cream? And honestly, I'm going with the pie, because sometimes a brownie can just be so, like, heavy associated with ice cream, but a pie, you can pick how much pie you want to eat, you can make sure that the pie isn't, like, too hefty, you can eat the pie in bits with a little bit of ice cream on top. Ah, nice. Like, any ice cream that kind of, like, dribbles off might get just absorbed by the pie crust, increasing the flavor also of the pie crust. There's just... There's just so much that can go on that's good with a pie crust. Mm. Bubbles asks, would you rather sing in the Animal Crossing language or in the Splatoon language? Well, the Splatoon language, I feel like, is a little bit harder than the Animal Crossing language. Because the Animal Crossing language tends to just be like little, little like... <laughs> but the Splatoon language, especially the songs, actually have like characters and thought put into like how they speak. And I feel like that's something that I wouldn't be able to emulate very well without a lot of practice. Logan says, question, and I hope, what is the most annoying sub-weapon to battle? Honestly, this is gonna be a super specific reason, but I really hate ink mines only because of splat zones. <laughs> Because you'll have some people who play an ink mine weapon, they'll chuck their like mines onto the zone. And if you don't know, if you paint over an ink mine, it will usually like blow up. So you can be like going ahead, painting the zone, and then oops, sorry, you you thought that all that time you spent painting the zone was actually gonna get you the zone? No, here's the ink mine to cover it over again. And sometimes if like you and your entire team are like focused in that one second to get zone and then you lose it because of the mines and then you die because you're all like point censored now, it, it definitely can ruin a run. It doesn't happen very often. It's only happened to me like a couple of times, but like when it does, I feel completely outplayed in like the best and worst way possible. <laughs> ink mine. Jake asks, question, what is the strangest thing these your cats have ever done? Honestly, sometimes what Tippy will do is he'll just kind of like stare up at a corner of the wall and like, I guess he must think there's like a bug or something there, but there's never anything there. He'll just stare up at like the corner of the wall, usually in like the doorway, and he'll just randomly like jump up almost all the way to the ceiling and then run away at top speed just to go and do something else. It has no explanation. There's never anything there. He just jumps to the top of the wall and then leaves. And I, 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 just, I just don't understand it. I just don't get it. <laughs> Tippy, what are you doing? Waffle says, question, what was your favorite year in school? Maybe your favorite memory from school? Ooh, I would say if I had to pick a favorite year, it'd probably be 10th grade. And uh, the reason for that is because that was the year in theater that we did Little Shop of Horrors, which is probably my favorite show. And it's only my favorite show because I have so many memories that are positive associated with it from like being in drama club. It was a great time. Uh, our director let us do pretty much anything that we wanted, and it pretty much made the best show that I've ever been a part of. My memories from it are just shot, but I just had this like overarching positive feeling whenever I think about it. Like a lot of my friends that I still know were also in that show, so we just all will get together and we're like, hmm little shop we won't even talk about anything that we did we'll just be like oh yeah i love little shop we'll put on some little shop music and we'll just reminisce <laughs> elise asks vic if you made a shifty station level what would its gimmick be ah i've always i've been waiting for a question like this i don't know if i've answered this one before but just in case i haven't i would just make it a squeegee level I just want to have squeegees. We're going to get the little ones, we're going to get the big ones. Put the little ones on the walls, put the big ones on the floor. We're going to make a mess. Like, come on. We have, like, the, the not the grillers, the, the flutters. That's the, that's the one. That's the one. We have flutters. Why don't we have squeegees? They just do the opposite. 
Like, imagine a turf war where you could actually lose the turf that you made because of all the squeegees running around. And remember, the squeegees also, like, track you to try and splat you. So I feel like it would just lead to, like, a mess. Like, I don't know if you'd want it to be, like, completely open, but maybe it could be a mostly open area, kind of like humpback pump track style with a couple of different levels. Have a few squeegees, like, locate on each round, and maybe, like, imagine if, like, someone's strategy was to try and, like, convince all the squeegees to move only to one side, so, like, one team is more constantly fighting the squeegees to get rid of all the turf. I think it could be a lot of fun. Joshua says, ooh, can you please show us the science trinkets that you have from your club? Okay, so I actually went and when I saw this question, I tried to see if I could find anything from my club, and I found out that the only thing that I actually have still is a lanyard, but I'm gonna, I I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it right here. I was so excited to find this, and I'm gonna keep it somewhere safe, because it's one of the only memories I have from this club. This kind of ties into the question earlier about my favorite year in school, because actually, 10th uh, grade, I believe, was either the first or the last year that I was in this club, I was only in it for two years because we actually ran out of funding, rip. But I, I have so many good memories associated with this club, man. It was a good time. We, I remember that it was the first time that I actually went to my university that I went to. It's just smiley face. Good times. Paper World Man asks, would you rather have a clan of dragons or a family of cats with superpowers? Okay, so here's where I draw the line. If I join the family of cats with superpowers, which I'm assuming is like warrior cat style here, <laughs> do I get the superpowers? Because if I do get the superpowers, then yes, I'm going to pick the family of cats with superpowers. But if I don't get the superpowers, I'm picking the clan of dragons because I feel like they would be able to be a little bit more powerful than the cats, you know? Also, it's kind of hard to say no to literal mythical creatures, so give me the dragons. I think that's better. Booyabak says, three good reasons why Clam Blitz should be kept in the game. Go on. Alright, alright. Number one, it's fun to watch. You can't tell me you've never watched a game at Clam Blitz and felt a little bit of excitement when, like, the enemy team gets the lead in the last couple of seconds. And then the other team has to make a mad dash back to the other side and then they get the lead. Come on. Come on, it's, it's the most exciting because it's the mode that has the most movement. Number two, it has the most coordination required of any of the modes, which actually, again, leads to how fun it is to watch, but also means that more strategies are viable in Clamblets than usually in a lot of the other modes. You'll see that sometimes a team might be really good at, like, Rainmaker, Tower Control, and Splat Zones, and then you'll see that other people will, like, counterpick Clamblets on them because they know the other team doesn't have as many good Clamblet strategies. <laughs> And number three, uh, I like it. It's just kind of fun to run around the whole map and have a good time. You know, uh, Victoria liked to go zoom across the map and throw the ball into the basket. Wee! Vic get a couple of funny splats. Wee! Vic pop an armor. Wee! <laughs> oh boy, Mellow Fellow says, oh, if you could pick a sub and special to get buffed a little too much, uh, what, what would it be? I think it should be Mist and Hammer, says the one who plays literally the Mist and Hammer weapon. I mean, if we're gonna go that way, can I, uh, can I buff Burst Bombs the way that it was at the start of Splatoon 2? You know, when it didn't take too much sub saver to throw three? And, uh, what if we put Stingray back to the way it was? You know, just to, just to see what happens. Maybe in the current ink armor meta, Stingray wouldn't be as polarizing as it was back then. No promises. Stingray could just become king again. But I, I feel like if it did, Nintendo could just like undo their choice. But I think it would be fun to see how Stingray operates in the current meta game, as opposed to like the way that it used to be. Shleem says, you have any other jobs other than YouTube? And if so, what the heck are they? Oh, I guess I gotta, I guess I gotta put together my resume, but on YouTube now, huh? <laughs> nah, nah. So basically, uh, my whole life, I've done just kind of like random jobs, so to speak. I've been in retail, and then I did some help with a tax firm for a while, and then I went back into retail again, and now I'm in retail, but more retail analytics. Whee! So, mostly retail most of my life, but honestly, I'm having a good time in my current job, so I'm really happy. I think over time, though, my jobs have become more office job-like, because my first job was, like, open-air retail, like, actually being in sales. My second job was actually, like, 
in an office helping with paperwork. My third job was in an office, but only thing I was really doing was stuff on my computer and making phone calls. And then my current job is mostly spreadsheets. So I've definitely gotten more office -y as time has gone by. Would you call that official? I'm sorry, I'll move on. <laughs> Mystic Coral says, I've been a huge fan of Love Live and I have to ask, what is your favorite song from the series? I, I really like Snow Halation, mostly because my friends got into it a lot, like around that time. And that was like the song that I'd hear them play all the time on their phones when they're playing like the rhythm game. I know the rhythm game changed. Didn't they like make like a new app or something like that that's completely separate from like the old Love Live? So you have people who are like, they have all their cards and all their goodies on like their old app and now they have to kind of like recollect everything on the new app or something wacky like that. Either way, I find Love Live very cool. I don't see myself ever like downloading the app and like playing the game, but I like watching other people play it and I feel like a lot of the music they make is really good. I know there's like a third set of girls now. They've been out for like a year or two. I really don't know much about them, but they're cute. I know there's like one that has like a little, like a little hoodie and everything. I like her. I, I don't know what their names are, what they look like, but I've seen the cute hoodie girl. She's nice. Humanoid figure says Q and A question. When's the next time you'll play Minecraft? Oh, who? That's a good question. I haven't really thought that one through. Let's say let, let's do it sometime in February. All right, we'll get back to that. Octoling says, Does Sheldon know that you work for Grizzco? If so, is he okay with it? I'm gonna say yes. How do you? How do you think all those funny little Grizzco weapons came to be? You think Grizzco really made them from scratch? <laughs> he needed a little bit of outside help. Don't don't tell anybody I told you this, okay? That's, this is supposed to stay under wraps. But uh, Sheldon got a pretty hefty commission when he helped out Mr. Grizz with those designs. Grizzco might have gone ahead and made all of them themselves, but you know, weapons don't just appear out of thin air, you know? Pikachu says, Christmas Splatfest idea, plastic or real Christmas tree? Imagine having any of your Christmas trees still up in almost February? No, never. I would never do that. Also, plastic Christmas trees for life, baby. <laughs> Linguini says, Q&A question. <laughs> What do you prefer, linguini or ravioli? I promise that I'm not biased at all. No, it doesn't sound like you're biased at all. Not with your name or anything like that. Honestly, I am going to be on your side, though. I think I prefer linguini. I feel like I only have ravioli around the holidays, and then I'm usually, like, ravioli out, <laughs> if that makes sense. I Like, ravioli is very tasty, but I feel like linguini is something you can eat all year long. So we'll go with linguini. Now, this question haunted me from the moment that I read it. Yordi asks, So, why are you still numbering the Sunday Funday streams like a Let's Play, but you don't number your Let's Play streams? Okay, so the thing about YouTube is sometimes if you number a Let's Play stream, it can scare people off from watching the video, because they'll be like, oh, this is video number, like, 17? of Vic making Pokemon videos? Do I have to watch like numbers one through 16 for them to make sense? And also, to be honest with you, I, I just never started numbering things and I don't think it's gonna start now. I really should number like the rest of my stream VODs, but I keep not doing that and now I have hundreds of them. So, let's let's start with that. Maybe I'll finally, uh, maybe I'll finally number those soon. That could be a good start. Bashi asks Vic, can, can squids actually swim? Okay, so here's how you perform this experiment. Step one, obtain inflatable swimming pool. Step two, obtain squid. Step three, fill the swimming pool with your liquid of choice. Water, ink, I don't know, man, like chocolate milk or something. Step four, just drop them in there. Drop that funny little ink thing in there. See what happens. And step five, hopefully profit. Hoot Dog says, if you could get any other pet, what the heck would it be? And honestly, I would just probably get like a funny little hermit crab or something. Dude, they're so cute. A couple of my friends used to own hermit crabs when we were younger, and I always loved like just looking at them. Like, look at the little guy go. I know they're like nocturnal, so they don't really do much during the day, but I think it'd be fun to like, you know, before going to bed, being able to look at my cute little hermit crab and then be able to go to bed feeling all nice because I just saw my cute little friend. 
Pashi asks question, is 2020 over yet? Can, can you please say yes? Well, Pashi, there's only one thing to say to you. You hear like one of those like advertisements in the background that show up on your phone or like on your computer and it's like, congratulations, you won. But instead it's just about 2020 being over yet. But yes, 2020 is over. Congratulations. But you know what else is over? Uh, this Q&A. Although I did have this one thing that I just wanted to point out where Ethan said, I think you forgot the A in the tags. It just says, hashtag Q, and for some reason it made me laugh for a solid five minutes. Okay, okay, so I'll be honest with you. The first time that that happened, I was really surprised, but now I actually just put hashtag Q <laughs> instead of doing hashtag Q and A, because I haven't like figured out how to actually make the A stay when I do it. I think it's funnier just to have the Q. So uh, if you want to be a part of these Qs, that's so I can later give you the A, just feel free to leave one of those funny little comments below, and I'll try my best to get back to as many of them as possible. G goodbye. I don't have a way to end this one, but I'm just gonna end the Q&A right now. I hope you have a good day. Don't forget to drink your water. Oh, the screen is going away. Bye.